everyone. We are back. We just did a value scale in an achromatic palette, meaning um, black and white. Um, we built a zero, a 50, a 100, then we turned those into a 30 and a 70, and then we laid it all out practicing with our different um, mediums and our different brushes to see how they all kind of worked. Um, it's getting familiar with our tools and um, kind of learning about the viscosity of the paint, meaning the, the way that it flows or moves across the surface. Um, we also learned about how much paint to use um, on our palette so that we're not being wasteful and that we don't run out when we're mid painting. So we'll just keep practicing that. Um, now we're gonna talk a little bit about color, but we're not gonna do color theory yet. We're getting there. But I just wanna show you what's in our kit. So here's our color wheel. We will discuss this in great length later. Um, but I just wanna show you what's in your kit. So you have, as far as the painter's color wheel goes, which is called subtractive. Again, we'll get to that later. Um, the three primaries. So these are like our kindergarten primaries. Um, yellow, red, blue. You also have a green. Um, when we get into color theory, I'll explain why they add that in a color theory set. We have a yellow ochre, which kind of sits over here. And we have an alizarin crimson, which is gonna sit kind of over here. So this was your required kit. And it also came with your ivory black and your white, which we are gonna use again. Um, the extra colors that you had were um, a Payne's gray. Don't trust the um, color on a tube. Um, if your paints were more expensive, then they would have physical real paint swatches on the tube, and then you can see what they look like. But these are printer's ink, so they're gonna be different. And then you had a second white, which is transparent white. And we'll talk later when we get into color theory more about the difference between titanium and transparent, but we'll come back to these. And I just wanna show you, if you got some of the recommended colors, um, we added in a blush, a magenta that would sit kind of over here, a Naples yellow that would sit over here, a violet, a different kind of green, and a darker blue. So you can see that it's helping us move around the wheel. But we're just gonna use our um, required painting stuff um, and see how it works and it's gonna help us understand how to lay out a palette. So for this exercise, I started a new one. You could probably have wiped down your black and white one and used it again, but just for clarity, I started again and I put the paper down. Um, and I'm gonna start like I did before with about a chocolate chip's worth of white. <clears throat> kind of hefty one. Same with the black. The black has a higher tinting strength, meaning it's more powerful. So we probably won't need as much black as we do white. And the colors have higher tinting strengths. So then when you lay out your palette, you wanna stay on the outer edges and whatever palette you plan to use for that painting, like you might only use these colors, like you don't always use the full range necessarily. Um, and the idea is that you usually, with the, near the white, you start with your light color and you work your way around to your dark color. And ours is just gonna happen to sit in the color wheel. So I'm gonna start with my cad yellow light and I'm gonna squirt out about the chocolate chips worth. And again, this is to help us kind of learn how much paint to use. Then I'm gonna go to the yellow ochre You can really see the difference there. I'm gonna to shift to the cad red light. The alizarin. You can't always tell what the colors look like when they're in a big ball, but when you pull them out, onto the palette, you have a better sense of what color they are. Wipe that off for later. I'll move on to my green. 
I'll put it down here. And then my blue. <clears throat> So I essentially have the color wheel moving around the edge of my palette. Um, so like we did in the last video, we started by mixing a gray. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to use less black than the white just a bit. The idea would be that it would be straight 50-50 um, ratio, but I know that my black is a little intense. Okay. So here we have our tints, our tones, and our shades is what we call these. Wipe that off. That's the key, right? We gotta wipe off our, our knife in between every time in our brush. Um, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna tint each one of these really quickly. Then we're gonna shade them, and then we're gonna, um, I'm sorry, tone them, and then shade them. So if you wanna, scrub through this part of the video you can if you want to paint along with me you can um, but then you can jump forward to when we start painting the really fun part about painting believe it or not is mixing the palette and the more time you spend here the easier it is to paint because then you're not making color mixing choices you're making painting choices um, and we haven't even gotten into drawing like how do you make something look like something which is even more fun so there's so many parts um, so maybe just let, watch me do it with the white and then if you want to scrub through the gray and the black you can um, and then catch yourself up. So I'm not going to make a ton of paint here. I'm going to take um, just a little bit and I'm going to lay out white in front of each color. I'm do a little more on these. There we go, do a little more on the blue, more on the green. Okay, and what we're gonna find out is that our paint is very strong. It has a strong tinting strength and um, you don't need very much to make this white shift. So I'm gonna take approximately that much. So it's like, um, oh, I don't know, two or three donut sprinkles worth into our chocolate chip. Yeah, you can see how quickly it's still really bright. Like it doesn't, um, the white is not as strong a tinting strength as the yellow there, right? Because there's way more yellow than there was white. And then I'm gonna do the same to each one of my colors, just a little bit, just to kind of get a feel for what these look like and how they can be in these different ranges. A little bit of the cadmium. You're gonna really see the difference with this cadmium versus this alizarin in just a second. Um, <clears throat> and that's gonna be huge when we get into color theory. For, for instance, if you tried to make a purple by mixing cad and ultramarine, it's gonna be kind of brownish. But if you mix a purple with an alizarin and an ultramarine, it's gonna be more jewel toned. And you can see why, right? You have a cool red right here. And the other one is a much warmer, kind of orangey coral red. And it's fun when you do this activity where you're um, adding the tint, you can really see what that kind of color family becomes. Just a little bits of paint, not much, but just enough that we'll be able to make something fun with it. And I'm going to add a little blue. Our blue is a pretty <clears throat> strong tinting strength in this brand. All the different brands of paint do different things too, just to add to the confusion. Okay, so now I'm going to do a 50. I'll scooch this over so I have a little room. And this is where if you wanted to um, 
paint along with me, you could, or if you just wanted to scrub through, I think you'll have a good sense of what we're doing. But look at that, is that like the prettiest gray you've ever seen? Gorgeous. Cadmium. This is where, like, you get flesh tones. Um, how you can paint nature um, just gets really fun when you do these um, rich value scales. Look at that pretty violet. Okay, we're just doing a little bit, but you're going to see how far this paint can go. Blue. Add a little more blue. Then I'm going to do it again with the black. Oops, I'm out of room here. More there. And then we'll mix with the yellow. I mean, use a little more yellow. Look at that pretty green. Is that the most beautiful green? What that tells us is that the black is blue. This is an ivory black. If we had a Mars black, it would be um, more orangey. That is a beautiful, rich, deep color. <clears throat> so you always want to really spend some time mixing your palette first. I'm going to scooch this out. A little more. Green. We're going to talk later about how to mix up complements um, and how that can desaturate or neutralize a color. And that's how things become really naturalistic looking. Okay, <clears throat> so we have our yellow, we have our yellow ochre, our um, cadmium light, our alizarin, our, what is, what do we have? Thalassine green and our ultramarine blue. Cool, okay. So now we're gonna paint. I'm gonna do my studies with my flat brush again, um, the flat wash brush. I might go back and forth. I'll start, I'm gonna start with the big one um, and use my, my um, mediums again. I'm gonna start with the linseed oil. That's the one that's kind of like the, the stuff that's in the paint anyways. And you can see how it'll help us move across the picture plane. I'm gonna start with my yellow and work my way down. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so I'm gonna load my brush. Actually, I'm gonna show you something different. I'm gonna load the brush and instead of going straight into the paint, I'm gonna just put a little coat on here first and you can see what happens. So I'm going to do um, the light one here, isn't that beautiful? Then I will switch to, I'm going to take it a little further, the medium one, which I'm going to pull in the middle. and then I'm going to use the one that mixed with black and it is this really beautiful green add a little linseed oil so the paint moves and 
And then like we did with our ombre here, we can try it to see if we can make them blend. So I have a clean flat. Wipe off my brush. Wipe off again. Wipe it off again. I'm gonna grab a little more of that. And you can practice seeing how you can make these kind of subtle transitions. Notice my towel again is really important because it's helping me shift. I'm gonna grab that little bit of leftover middle. So you're making a chromatic value scale. Cool, right? And if I wanted to go darker, I could even grab a little black. And make it even richer on the side. Great, right? Okay, since I'm totally switching colors, I am going to rinse out my brush in my silicone jar. So hopefully I'm proving to you how awesome it is to spend so much time on your palette first because you're um, now getting to really paint, which is fun. Okay, I'm going to switch, load my brush with a little linseed oil again, um, switch to this yellow ochre, which became a really beautiful peach. How beautiful is that? Yum. Again, we want to see how far the paint will go. Come into this one. Linseed oil. And then we'll go into our dark. That's pretty dark, like I got a lot of black in there, so I'm gonna add a little bit more of the Naples, or the, excuse me, the yellow ochre. When we did the black and white ones, we um, did a 30, a, um, and 70 as well. Here we just have the 100 and the um, 50 and the zero. So I kind of made one up on the fly. So here's my dryish clean brush again. This is where I'm going to try to blend these together. This is where I might <clears throat> go ahead and mix up. I'm gonna get a new rag, that one's getting pretty gross. Um, I'm gonna mix up a little more of the white one. So hopefully too, like you're getting in this exercise, the confidence to say, okay, any more of that color, um, can I remix it, can I get close to it? And I'm doing like a real choppy kind of um, <clears throat> cross hatching mark. And it's all about how you kind of control layering and building that surface. If you wanted it to be like super, super smooth, you could let it dry for like a day and then um, kind of feather back over it. I'm gonna go back into this middle. Add that in a little. Okay, then we'll switch to our um, cadmium. And 
have like a cool little rainbow here in a second. Linseed oil. We'll learn when we get into color theory how to make that not look so Easter eggy. And it's as easy as mixing its opposite color in there. Isn't that pretty? So that's the black <clears throat> and the cad. And you can see how pretty that kind of violet is that comes out. And here's our, oh, I'm sorry, that was the 50 in the CAD. So here's the 100. Kind of maroonish. I'm gonna add a little linseed oil. Notice on this one, on the black and white one, we used a lot of the different mediums, but this one, I'm just using the linseed oil. Again, we're gonna learn why you're gonna use the other ones more thoughtfully later when we start to understand um, the indirect painting method. Cut these together. Again, this is what you cannot do so easily. I'm gonna wash my brush off because it's getting too gunky over here, too purple. Um, which you can't do very well with acrylic. I mean, you can, but it's harder. So fun. Okay, I'm gonna switch to the alizarin. Linseed oil. This is my 50. Even more violet. Again, this exercise is to help you see how far your paint will go. And then I'm going to shift to my black. I 100 with the alizarin. So jump over here. Oh, that's super dark. I'm going to add a little more alizarin right there. I kind of mixed it with the brush. And in the end, hopefully you have a pretty cool little non-objective color study. And you're practicing picking up, like I got too much of the dark in here, so I'm like kind of removing it and blending it. It's a little muddy. I'm gonna go back and fix that in a minute. Okay, and then we're gonna shift to our green. Wash my brush out. So it's not so much just the cleaner as it is, you're just kind of loosening up the pigment and then it's what happens in the towel. Okay, and we're gonna shift Again, we'll just keep using the linseed oil to this pretty robin's egg color. And we'll move on to the one that was mixed with the 50. I'm hoping you're learning like how much paint you need. I was a little 
short there on that one. And then into the one with the black. linseed oil yeah and then I have these really cool little value scales wiping the brush off pretty good and we'll do the blue a little linseed oil. I always think ultramarine looks like toothpaste. <clears throat> it's not my favorite, but we'll make it pretty in other ways. I'll we'll move into the 50. I was stingy on my 50s. I, I grabbed a little gray. Go into our 100. Trying to paint away from the edges. Okay, there's a little test, so I don't mind if it bleeds under there too bad, but when I do, do your best to keep it out of there. So now, with the colors in your required kit, you have made these really cool little value scales, um, which is pretty fun. And we can um, work back into these later when they dry a little bit um, to do some really neat stuff. But while they're wet, I wanna practice with the leftover paint that you have um, to see what happens when it sits up on top. So I'm gonna switch to a different brush. I'm gonna use a four flat. I haven't used this one yet, so it's got the glue in it. And I'm going to take a little bit of my solvent-free fluid and load my brush. <clears throat> At this point, since we're direct painting, you can't really get these out of order. When we start indirect painting, they will get out of order, but I'll explain later. So I'm going to grab a bunch of yellow and I'm going to see what happens if I try to pull that out of the tube color. Over it. Like I, how I can make like a really bright area um, if I don't like it. The beauty of oil paint is I can just remove it. So I've got a fairly clean brush and I'm just going to kind of wipe that back off. If I needed to use my towel, I could, um, I can pull that back off and then go in, grab a little more white and mix back into it <clears throat> to get my tint back. So you can kind of play with your extra paint and see how it might work. I can see how it like might pull up some paint from underneath. What happens if you use the bright back on top of it? what those look like when they sit on top of the different values. And it really wasn't that much paint. It was like a chocolate chip's worth of paint. And now you have detail sitting on top of those. Um, I'll try it with some of the cadmium.
try it with some of the alizarin. My alizarin is like a little thicker. I can feel it. I'm gonna add a little linseed oil. Then my cadmium, they're all gonna have a little bit of a different consistency. Oh yeah, I add the linseed oil and it's so much nicer. So you can try some little brush strokes. You can shift to different brushes and see how they work. Um, let's try a tiny one. I've got this little round. Oh, I did the wrong color. Haha, <laughs> I was supposed to be Naples. Let's put the, or not Naples, what is this? Yellow ochre. It's that little round. We can talk about this later, but um, there's a cheap brush here. Um, it's actually easier to make a little skinny line with a flat. Try to show you in a second. So the trick here is how can you layer paint and not make mud? Do you need to add some medium? Try all the different mediums. Try different things. Um, I'm gonna try <clears throat> this more kind of like rough bristly brush. I'm gonna go back to the cadmium since I got them all mixed up anyway. So this can look like anything. These don't have to look like this at all. This is just, you know, testing and trying different things with your different brushes and then using the rest of your paint. I'm gonna use this um, number six shader. See what happens if it creeps into some of the other colors. It's starting to look like a you've been blowing around. I'm gonna use one of these kind of sloppier brushes. This the um, I, like I said, I'll tell you in another video about brushes, but this is called the snap, and this is a soft snap. And then the other ones, like these white ones, have a harder snap. So I'm gonna try one of these. I'm gonna load it up with my Terp, aka thinner. Grab some of my blue. As you can see what happens when you have all those tints, tones, shades, all that complexity underneath and then it does really neat stuff to the um, to the higher chroma, cleaner colors on top. I want to wipe out. I don't like that brush stroke. I'm gonna put these down. This is my hazard. As I start holding all my brushes, I think it's really good to have lots of different brushes going on at once, so that you're not having to clean them all. But I'm really unhappy with this little guy, so I'm gonna take him out. And voila, <clears throat> now he's gone. Well, I don't really like that one any better. Go back to our baby blue. Brush that back in. And I think we'll just get rid of it because it wasn't playing nicely. So it's all about like picking up the pigment and putting it back down and so forth. Okay, and then as you remember, just as a reminder, you take your palette knife and then you um, scoop out all the paint onto the palette before 
you rinse them in the silicone cleaner and then <clears throat> um, wash them in the sink. So there's a lot of paint left in those. Kind of a blue, keep the reds up here. I'm gonna show you what to do with this extra paint. There's not much left. That's kind of the game of this too, is to figure out how much paint do you need. Oh, that went right in the black. Sorry about that, excuse me. This one doesn't have much in it. Okay, I think they're all pretty well squeezed out. Let's get this one. Okay, so I'll rinse these in the silicone cleaner. Scoop this guy out. And then what you can do, once the brushes are fairly empty of big goops of pigment, is if you wanna save this paint, a good practice, because there's not enough like to really save it. And when we start making real paintings, we're gonna like save it. Like we're gonna mix enough to where we're good um, to get through a painting. This is just little tests. <clears throat> so I just scooped all my reds together. I'm trying to push them up close to each other. I'm gonna scoop my alizarin, I'm sorry, my yellow ochre and my cadmium. So when you put them all together, it's quite a bit of paint. <clears throat> and then we can shift to saving our blues. I'm gonna put my gray, my blue, my little bit of green in with my black, and then I have a really pretty black <clears throat> for later. Like a surprise. Ooh, yeah, that's lovely. And then if I want to save it, I can see if I can use it at a later date. <clears throat> and I'll take a clean brush, I'll take linseed oil. And I'll drip it over the top. These little buckets. And then I might be able to scrape these up and put them onto a new palette when I start painting next time. Um, and then notice too that these little guys, we did two paintings in one day and there's just a little bit left. And at some point when it starts to get too gunky and it's affecting your colors, that's when you would um, try to trade them out. So that's why you don't want these very full. This one, again, we can also do on the palette, but then you run the risk of throwing it away. So there's just a little bit left in there. Um, okay, so I'll come back later. We'll peel the tape um, and then I'll meet you in the next lesson um, and we'll, we'll pick up from here. But I'm gonna peel the tape now for fun. No imagery, no subject, just little non-objective painting test studies. We ended up with some kind of cool little ombres, some little value scales. Okay, there we go. So when you get done with yours, take a picture of them and post them to the project. Um, and I will give you instructions on how to do that. Okay, we'll see you soon. Make sure you wash your brushes right away. Bye.